How's it going everyone, and welcome to our new series, Artifact Hunter. In this series, I will start with a fresh level 60 plus account that has no artifacts on it, and one by one hunt them all down in New World, showing you how I go about getting them, and how long it takes me to get each one. But before we get into the series, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel, it helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. Currently, as we start the series, there are 35 artifacts I can get, as seen on screen. I sorted them all into three categories, those that require open world grinding to obtain, those that can only be gotten within mutated expeditions, and those that require PvP content to acquire. The ones with the green glow around them are really easy to get, and can easily be soloed, whereas the yellow ones are slightly more difficult as they will most likely require a group and may be time gated, and the red ones are the most difficult ones as they will require a bunch of luck or long wait times to obtain. I immediately threw all of the PvP ones into the red difficulty because I'm not the best PvP player and on this account, I haven't PvP'd yet, so I'll need to get geared up and my PvP track up to level 20 to get started on these. Plus, it's all luck based, so I might not get an artifact for 100 PvP tracks if I'm really unlucky. The expeditions are all on yellow difficulty simply because it can take around 20 minutes per expedition, so the grinds will be really long if unlucky for these. Even if I just do it on mutation level 1, which isn't too difficult, plus the time gate of needing the expedition to be mutated adds to its difficulty. And then, the open world artifacts really vary. There's the really easy ones that I can solo and just sit around AFK grinding out to the ones that require a group to farm, which will be a bit harder since I am in a low populated fresh start server, and all the way up to the most painful one of the lot, the Scorpion Sting, which if I'm unlucky can take days to get, simply due to how few kills of the boss you can get in per day. Now, you may be wondering, why are the two season pass artifacts not on there? And that's because in this series, I will not go for those until the season after, once they've been added into the game in a different activity. So like for example, how the Endless Thirst earrings used to be on the season pass, and now they're in an expedition, I will wait until they've been added to an activity to acquire those. If you're just here to see how I got certain artifacts, feel free to use the timestamps to jump to the one you want to see. But if you're here to come along for the whole journey, let's get started. To get the series going in this episode, I want to knock off a bunch of the easier artifacts to start making a dent in the list. Plus, I want to start leveling a few PvP tracks up, so I can start working towards the PvP track artifacts as well. So far, this account is still on PvP track level 0, but to begin, I figured I'd go for an easy, solo friendly grind I could do AFK that would also be a great piece of gear to use on the account for leveling PvP tracks, and that's the Featherweight. Featherweight is a really unique artifact that has no weight to it. This allows users who want to stay in the light equip load to wear a couple of pieces of heavy gear while staying light which really helps them take less damage. In order to get this piece, I would need to farm out the open world boss, Nurmur, over in Fungal Ridge of the Elysian Wilds. He's on the platform all the way at the top of the tree. He's extremely easy to solo and drops the Tangle Vine set along with Featherweight which could be pretty useful gear to have as well since I do take a lot of thrust damage. To make things even easier, when I got to the grind spot, there was already a couple of people here farming him, so I just joined the group and got to grinding. He spawns every 6 minutes, so I put my timer on and kept coming back to finish him off every time he spawned. Luckily enough, I didn't have to wait very long until I got what I came for, as the featherweight artifact dropped on kill number 6. Shout out to Statched, a fellow grinder who called it would be kill number 6. That means, after my first 36 minutes of grinding, we had acquired artifact number 1, the featherweight. We also got a tangle vine ring during this grind. But unfortunately, it's one of the few pieces of Tanglevine gear that I have no use for. This is where I ran into my first bump in the road. I was still not level 65 yet, and I needed to be so I could equip these cool artifacts I was hunting. So with that in mind, I decided that the next artifact I would hunt for would be the Attuned Leather Pants, as they were the only ones currently locked behind a questline, the Elysian Wilds main story questline, and hopefully by the time I finish these sets of quests, I'll be able to be level 65 and start equipping these artifacts. The Attuned Leather Pants are also a very unique piece, since not only do they give you a plus 40 magnify to your highest attribute, but you also get a plus 10 bonus to all attributes, which can lead to some really cool and unique builds. Although I rather featherweight, I still had to acquire this piece if I was going to gather all of the artifacts, so I got to grinding. I needed to finish the quest, The End of New Eden, which started after finishing one with nature. Unfortunately, I haven't started any of the quests in this zone yet, so it's time to start grinding. One eternity later. Well, that was a lot longer than I remembered. After roughly two hours of questing, I had finally finished up the quest line and got on my attuned leather pants. I did do a couple of side quests along the way, just to make sure I was 65 by the time I was done. And sure enough, I just managed to make it to 65 before finishing up the end of New Eden. So now, 
I had both artifacts and was high enough of a level to use them so I could finally put on my featherweight jacket. But I wanted to get one more artifact before I called it a day. And after the long grind of questing, I wanted something a bit more AFK and relaxing, so I chose the Ghoul Gloves. The Ghoul Gloves aren't a very popular artifact, despite how cool they look, simply because their special perk is only useful in very specific builds. It allows you to transfer one debuff you have on yourself to an opponent when you hit them, but they have to be below 50% health and there's a 3 second cooldown, so it's very niche, but for sure great for transmog. Much like Featherweight, these gloves can be farmed from an open world boss that's very easy to solo, and his name is the Overgrown Guardian. You can also get them from Adiana's Chosen Beast, but the Guardian is easier, so I just went after him. Plus, he's located in the new Olympus area of the Legion Wilds, so I can get one of the perks unlocked on my Featherweight here as well, so two birds with one stone. Once I got over to the Dayspring Tree, over in the Legion Wilds, I set up for the grind ahead. Also, following the same theme as the first boss we grinded, the Guardian also drops a full set of the Tangled Vine gear, so I was hoping for a couple of pieces of them as well during the grind. I got all ready to grind out the Guardian. I put a movie on on the second monitor, got myself a drink, and mentally prepared for the process. And to my surprise, within two kills, which took me only four minutes in total, the Ghoul Gloves dropped for me. An incredible bit of luck to acquire the third artifact on the account. But I still stuck around for a couple more minutes to finish off the 30 kills in the area to unlock the perk on my featherweight chest piece. But after 2 hours and 40 minutes of grinding, we were left with 3 artifacts in the account. The featherweight, the 2 and leather pants, and the ghoul gloves. Not a bad start to the series. For the next episode, I hope to grind out some weapons that can be used on the account, since I'm still using 625 gear score weapons. I'm thinking either the inferno or deep freeze. Plus, I hope to knock off a couple of the easier artifacts as well, and I'll be sitting AFK on a couple of faction control points from now until then, leveling the PvP track up a bit as well. Which artifact do you want to see me go for next? And, if you have any suggestions that can make the series better, please let me know and I'll try to implement them into the next episode. Also, if you're enjoying the series, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps out massively. As much as I enjoy creating this series, I'll only keep it going if you guys are enjoying it. So let me know in the comments, or if you'd rather me go back to some of my older series instead, let me know as well. I'll set up a poll over in the community section of the channel, so you guys can vote on if you'd like the series to continue or not. I think it's a fun series, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. And until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching another video, and a massive shout out to all the channel members and patrons who help support the channel. If you'd like to learn how to get all the artifacts in New World, click on the video to the left. Or, if you'd like to follow another one of my series in which I take you on a lore journey to the main story quest in the game, click on the series to the right.